What happens if your business is threatened with oblivion? That was the opening line in a story on LinkedIn about the New York Times that was written by Sir Michael Moritz, who is a partner at Sequoia Capital and an early backer of companies like LinkedIn and Google and PayPal. He's also a former journalist. The story came out um, the spring, in the spring, a little less than a year after Seb and I had joined the New York Times. And it was essentially, there it is, it was essentially all about the things that Moritz thought the Times had gotten wrong in its digital transformation up to that point. His basic idea was that the Times had been successful enough journalistically for long enough and just successful enough business-wise that we hadn't really seen the need to change as quickly or as radically as the world was changing around us. So that same spring, our CEO, my boss, Mark Thompson, I think kind of bravely asked Moritz to come to an executive retreat at the Times and to address us, his subjects, head on. And while he was there, Moritz talked about the idea that oblivion, the notion of oblivion doesn't really discriminate, it can happen to any one of us in this room, but in general, in his experience as a VC, digitally native companies are generally better at getting what he calls the jeopardy factor, meaning they walk around all day long worried about their oblivion every day. And the most famous, um, famous uh, entrepreneur who does this in, in his mind is Mark Zuckerberg, who I think the story goes somewhere in the neighborhood of three, three and a half years ago when Twitter was getting ready to IPO and it looked like Twitter, maybe not Facebook, was going to be the dominant social media brand for a mobile age. What did Zuckerberg do? He felt the jeopardy factor and he put his whole company on lockdown until they solved for mobile and we all know exactly how that story ends. So whether or not we who are listening to Moritz at this retreat agreed with his finer points about the New York Times, there's one thing from his talk that really resonated with all of us and that was that in order to really implement the radical changes required to succeed, we had to first believe, really believe, all of us in the possibility of our own oblivion. Any media company with an ad-supported business model, digital or print, is feeling the bite of the fangs. And to be successful, a 2020 media company has to move beyond just being digital and has to move with a fundamentally different view of the world. So no longer is digital enough, digital is social. Just like Facebook has 85 cents, a lot of our dollars, they also have 55 minutes out of our day. And I think it's still an open debate if social feeds are gonna be the future of where people consume journalism or news, there is still no debate about social's dominance with people's time. Social is also mobile. Social's dominant consumption is in mobile and every media company, every media company has to move beyond digital first to mobile first. Mobile is also visual. The written word is no longer enough, and as we become a mobile-first media company, we must also become visual-first. The screen is a new canvas with visuals taking priority over the written word. Mobile is also live. Uh, the potential for live media is gonna breed the biggest media disruption since, we, since the dawn of the internet, and we're really just seeing the beginning of it with Facebook Live with so much more to come. Mobile is also personal. In a mobile-first world, we're closer to consumers more than ever before, and a place on that home screen means you have a spot next to someone's most important personal information, which leads to extra scrutiny about who's gonna make it on there, who's gonna have access to what information, who's tracking them. What we know now is this could lead to an ad-free world. Now, that's exaggerated, absolutely exaggerated. Um, but what we do know is that intrusive advertising is gonna continue to find less and less homes. Um, we're heading into a world where advertisers are gonna wanna pay less for ads each year, and there's gonna be less and less to serve. So we have to think, as a company, rethink the value that we deliver in the world. And we call this world, in our third lesson for a 2020 media company, the fall of advertising and the rise of programming.